I hate shitty tools. And I don't want to see you guys buy shitty tools. So today, we're going to be testing out this. One of the cheapest plasma cutters you can get on Amazon. Anything like me, you always imagine having an awesome workshop with tons of great tools. Only you realize, holy cow, that stuff is expensive. I'm lucky enough to have just finished this amazing workshop, but with how many major setbacks we've had, I am now broke. So I'm looking for any opportunity I can to save money on tools, and we're gonna see if this thing is gonna fit the bill. I hate cutting with a grinder. I hate how much dust it makes. It's, it's such a messy process. I've wanted a plasma cutter for a very long time. So I got this model from Bestark. It's not their actual cheapest model. I opted for a slightly upgraded one because I wanted to have CNC functionality in case I decide to upgrade one day. But this is still extremely affordable. And so far this is packaged very nicely. This thing could take a pounding in shipping and probably still be fine. Wow, that thing is tiny. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> so this thing is so small, you definitely don't even need a cart for it. You can totally just hand bomb this thing. It weighs like maybe 10 to 15 pounds. But I happen to have a leftover cart right here. <laughs> it looks tiny on this thing. I have a leftover cart because I have already built what I think is probably the coolest welding cart on the internet. My Milwaukee welding cart. Yeah, let's get this thing hooked up. I can't believe this thing looks really nice already. Oh, those are very notchy buttons. All right, let's see what we've got in here. Oh. A lot more stuff than I expected. That's probably the airline. Got the ground clamp. That's really nice. They actually come with some extra consumables and the Teflon tape for putting it together. And we've got the instructions. I'm a big LS guy, so I'm really not big on reading. So we'll try to get this thing together without having to read anything. We got the adapter here. I don't have 220 in this shop, so this is gonna be a pretty good test to see how it runs on one, just 110. This is the part I'm excited about. Dang. That's, it's already got a nice cover on the, the hose and everything. This is really nice. Everything that is included in the box is laid out on the table here. We've got the ground clamp, the airline, the actual cutting torch, instruction manual, and some consumables as well as the Teflon tape. We've got a little wrench. We've got the 220 to 110 adapter. These are included for the CNC capability. It's not needed for using it as a regular plasma cutter and the plasma cutter itself. Looks like everything's got a, a detent in it, so it's ensures that you install everything the right way the first time. So that's nice. Ooh. It's actually unreal how flexible this cord is for being 220. This is really nice. All right, I did a very quick setup on the machine. This thing has never been fired, as you guys can see. We've got eighth inch thick, very rusty material. These things are supposed to have a uh, pre-arc, or whatever it's called, so it should be able to do rusty material no problem. I haven't tested this thing. Let's see how it does. Oh, I cannot see anything out of this helmet. I can't see fucking shit out of this thing. Turn this way down. Blew the breaker. <laughs> Not on the machine, I blew the breaker in my shop. <laughs> okay, first cut, let's see. I did not think I'd blow the breaker that quickly, but so far this thing is cutting very nicely. I was going a little bit too quick, so it didn't cut through perfectly there. Underside, very little slag already. That's, that's pretty impressive considering I have not messed with the settings at all. Chances are I've got the amperage turned up way too high for this thickness of material. So I'm gonna try turning that down and see if I can keep the breaker intact. All right, I realized the issue was not with the plasma cutter. I had the, which I knew, I had the air compressor and the plasma cutter plugged into the same bracket. When the air compressor tried to kick on, it blew the breaker. So I moved the compressor to the far side of the shop onto a different circuit. This thing's turned back on. I realized I had the amperage way too high for this amount of material. So we got that adjusted properly and we're gonna finish off this cut. Uh, it's not cutting through cleanly, so we'll turn the amperage up a little bit again. There we go. Uh, 
I blew the breaker again. This is embarrassing, but I've got to own up to it because it was my mistake. When I got this thing, I did not look that closely at the power requirements. Uh, this shop is not totally finished yet. I've just got bare bones wiring in here. I've only got a couple outlets because we ran out of money if you saw our previous video. And I've only got 15 amp breakers in here. I thought that would be plenty because it's enough to run my welder. This thing needs, I think it's 40 amps, 30 or 40 amps if you're running 110 and even more if you're running 220. I don't have that here. Um, I'm gonna hang on to the tool because I am gonna finish wiring this at some point and so far it's a pretty cool little tool. To finish testing this, I spoke to one of my neighbors and they've got 220 and some bigger breakers on their 110 circuit. So we're gonna bring this unit over there to test it out and make sure that it actually works as well as I'm hoping it will. Okay, we've got it all hooked up now. I double checked the specs and I actually had it backwards. You need 30 amps if you're a 30 amp breaker if you're running it on 220 and a 40 amp breaker if you're running on 110. I was wrong. There's only 15 amp breakers on the 110 here, but we've got 220 and it's a 20 amp. So it's a little bit better. And I think it'll be less taxing on the machine with it being 220. So we're gonna try it out here. This is an old piece of metal I've had floating around literally since I've been into cars. This was to fix a body mount on a truck I no longer have back in high school. So it's, I'm gonna be cutting up a little piece of history here, but we'll see how the machine does. That cut pretty well. I do love that plasma cutting keeps it so cool. You can just handle everything almost immediately after. Like if you were grinding, you'd have to let this sit and cool for ages afterwards. Okay, I'm gonna do a little freehand cutting, see if it'll pop the breaker or not. Okay, I'm hyped on this tool. That's, that's crazy. No, nothing got hung up there. You didn't have to ha hammer the cut off piece loose just fell right off that's sick so initial thoughts this thing is very impressive i have done next to no setup on this thing it's already cutting very clean so next we're going to switch to some different materials i've got this is all i've got for aluminum is just some flat bar but we'll see how it does with aluminum it's supposed to be able to cut anything but i know aluminum is notoriously hard to cut and we've also got some more complex shapes. This one is painted, so it'll be a good test of the pilot arc. And it's also doubled up, which I don't know if it'll be able to cut through both with a bit of an air pocket in the middle. And yeah, we'll just try cutting through the welds and just see how it does with something a little bit more taxing. I do wish this was a bigger piece of aluminum just to give it a better test, but if it does okay, maybe I'll cut hot dog style. Okay. Like nothing. There's a bit of slag there, but that's to be expected. I turned up the amperage just a tiny bit for this one, just because it is a little bit thicker. Again, I'm only on a 20 amp breaker right now. It's not what they recommend. I've got the machine set to 35 and this is probably quarter inch thick when you account for both plates stacked. See how it does. I don't think that's going through. No, it's not going all the way through. I'm not sure why it's shutting itself off. It's definitely not cutting all the way through. It's trying, but it is starting on the paint, which is nice. I thought it would struggle a little bit to get the arc started, but it's doing fine. Let me turn this thing up a little bit more. That was definitely user error. Now this might be wishful thinking, but I'm gonna see if I can cut just this weld here to separate the top plate from the bottom one. I don't, I don't know if that's something that plasma cutters should be able to do, but we're gonna see if it'll do it. There it goes. I can't say I didn't hurt the plate underneath because I cut through quite a bit, but that may have been on the second cut. That's, I'm happy with that. That's, that's better than I thought it would be able to do. I thought it was just gonna blast right through both pieces. This machine has handled everything I've thrown at it aside from a 15 amp breaker. So I think now we're gonna push it a little bit further. I 
Don't have much thicker material than this, but I'm going to cut out a couple squares of it and uh, just keep stacking them to see how much we can cut through. It did that one okay once I, once I upped the amperage a little bit, so we're just going to keep on repeating that until it fails. Let's do a, a quick test on it punching through instead of starting at an edge. That seems like something that would be useful and also tricky to do. Easy. Dang, I, I'm very surprised at how little slag there is. I shouldn't be using this for the hammer, but there's next to no slag on this. That's gonna be very little cleanup. A couple seconds in the belt sander at most. And how hot is this? Not hot at all, wow. So we're gonna push our luck here. There's, I'm thinking that there's no way that this is gonna happen. We got four plates stacked up here. Okay, that's, that's pretty impressive. That's actually a fairly clean cut too. Like it didn't, this side deflected, the right hand side deflected a little bit, but that's probably me. And you can see how square the left side of that cut is. I'm gonna see if I can start on this single piece and then maybe angle the torch a bit and get it to cut through all four of these in one. This is a weird kind of dynamic cut. I'm already very impressed with the machine, but I'm just having fun with it right now. I've never had a plasma cutter before, so this is, Kind of fun to see what its capabilities are. So what I want to know is what do you get out of a big brand name like Miller or Lincoln that you don't get out of a unit like this? Because as far as I can tell, you're paying 10 times the price for no reason. This thing does everything a hobbyist like me would ever need to do. I was worried that maybe it wouldn't perform that well or the build quality wouldn't be that good or be hard to find replacement parts or consumables, but it's built great. Nothing's leaking so far. It was super easy to set up. Consumables you can get straight from Amazon, which is super convenient. And it cuts really well. Like a bunch of the cuts didn't have any slag to even clean off of them. It's, it's nuts. So if you guys want to pick one of these up, I'll put a link down below for where I got this one. And otherwise, thanks for watching guys.